Creating a miniature sun on Earth may sound like something out of science fiction, but this is precisely the goal pursued by modern scientists studying new forms of energy. In this video, you will learn about how Saudi Arabia is building the most futuristic city in the world, where an artificial river is located in Libya, and why the most promising city in South Korea turned out to be unwanted. Enjoy the show! Mira City Saudi Arabia has unveiled one of the most grandiose urban development projects. The city to be called Line is essentially one enormous skyscraper, standing at a whopping 1600 feet tall with a width of 650 feet. But most importantly, it will stretch for a remarkable 105 miles. The exterior of the city will be covered with large glass panels that reflect the surrounding nature. According to the creators, this exterior facade is designed to blend the city with the surrounding landscape and shield it from the harsh sunlight and heat, ensuring a comfortable temperature and climate inside. The creators claim that Line will rely solely on renewable energy sources. This approach is designed to prioritize the well-being of people over transportation and infrastructure. Inside, the city will feature numerous parks and green spaces, including full-fledged rivers. Interestingly, vegetation will not be limited to the ground, but will also extend to the walls and roofs of the buildings. Another environmentally friendly feature is that the city will not allow the use of cars. At all. The project does not include roadways, making it impossible to use cars within the metropolis. However, there are some unspecified details, particularly how essential services like emergency response, fire departments and public utilities will function. But it's known that a high-speed rail system will run through the city, allowing people to travel from one end to the other in just 20 minutes. Line is designed in a way that all significant locations are within a 5-minute walk. You won't need to travel to a different part of the city to get groceries or take your children to school. There are plans to construct a football stadium at the city center, and interestingly, it will be located around a thousand feet in the air. The issue of food will be addressed by creating vertical farms inside the buildings. ITER Continuing the topic of green energy, another massive project is worth mentioning. The creation of an international experimental thermonuclear reactor is being financed by a significant number of countries, including the UK, Switzerland, India, China, Russia, Canada, Australia and others. The scientists' goal is to develop technology that will allow the use of thermonuclear fusion reactions for commercial purposes. The path toward this goal involves solving numerous challenges related to physics and technology. But why are scientists developing a project that already costs a staggering 22 billion euros? The reason is that this reactor can create what is known as a little star, specifically plasma. Using this technology, countries investing in its development will be able to generate vast amounts of exceptionally clean energy. But how does it work? The reaction involves the nuclei of substances like deuterium and tritium. Deuterium nuclei consist of one proton and one neutron, while tritium nuclei contain one proton and two neutrons. Under normal circumstances, the nuclei of these substances repel each other due to having the same charge. However, at extremely high temperatures, they can collide. When these nuclei collide, they undergo a strong interaction, leading to the creation of a new nucleus of a different chemical element, helium. This process releases a significant amount of energy. To make the nuclei collide, the plasma must be heated to a scorching temperature of up to 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. But how is this possible? This process is extremely complex, but in short, it is achieved using a microwave radiation. The problem is that a vast amount of electricity is required to initiate the reaction, and even more energy is needed to sustain it. Thus, all previous reactors have consumed more electricity than they produced. However, the potential of this technology is so high that despite the cost, scientists continue their work. Man-made river in Libya Another grandiose mega-project astounds with its scale. In Libya, a whole man-made river has been constructed. In modern times, it is considered the largest engineering project. However, it doesn't quite resemble its name. The Great Man-Made River is in fact a massive underground network of water channels that daily supplies a vast amount of drinking water to remote settlements and desert regions in Libya. This project is of utmost significance and utility to the country, since it provides a substantial portion of its drinking water. The extensive system comprises aqueducts and pipes of varying diameters, including 1300 wells with depths exceeding 1600 feet. 
it serves many cities in Libya, such as Tripoli, Benghazi, Sirte and others. In 2008, the project made its way into the Guinness World Records. Back in the 1980s, during the times of Muammar Gaddafi's Jamahiriya, the leader of Libya initiated an ambitious project to create an extensive network for transporting water resources that spanned several countries. The project's management was established in October 1983 with the aim of developing a system to transport water from the southern part of the country, which had vast underground lakes, to the northern part, where drinking water was scarce. By 1996, Artesian water had reached the capital, Tripoli, and by 2007 it was available in the city of Garion. The total length of the underground communications is astounding, roughly around 2,500 miles. The materials used in constructing the system could have been used to build a small city. The water flows through the primary pipes to reservoirs, which are typically built near cities. The city's water supply network is connected to these reservoirs. It's also worth noting the size of the pipes used in the construction of the man-made river, which are comparable in scale to subway tunnels. Songdo City South Korea also presented its grand project. In 2002, about 12 miles away from the country's capital and simultaneously its largest city, Seoul, the construction of Songdo began. It was supposed to be the city of the future, where affluent residents of the capital could live, while avoiding many of the drawbacks associated with any metropolis. An environmentally friendly city filled with cutting-edge technological infrastructure and green spaces, Songdo was located just an hour's drive from Seoul and was intended to create a contrast to the overcrowded capital by attracting residents tired of traffic, polluted air and massive buildings. However, there is one major caveat. After a considerable period of time, almost no one lives in a city designed for over 300,000 people. The infrastructure is unused, and the state-of-the-art high-tech buildings are simply standing there. Local residents who did decide to stay in the city report that nothing works in Sondo. Most of the buildings are deserted, and the empty plots where new skyscrapers were planned to be constructed remain untouched. The whole city resembles one enormous abandoned construction site. The plan was to address all the typical issues plaguing major cities – an immense amount of waste, air pollution, traffic congestion and dirty public spaces. They intended to minimize the number of cars, constructing major highways primarily for travel to other cities and remote areas. The idea was that local residents would use public transport or bicycles. An astronomical amount of money, precisely $40 billion, was spent on building the city. The aim was to create a new environmentally friendly environment with numerous parks and green spaces, with all necessities within walking distance. It's a great pity that the project didn't succeed. Lusail Unlike Songdo, the city of Lusail, situated in Qatar, is more populated. The first mention of the settlement, which bore the name of the city, dates back to 1908, although there was no city there at the time. In 2002, the country's government issued a decree that allowed foreigners to buy real estate in Lusail and its suburban areas, making it the first region in the country where this was permitted. This decision sparked a significant influx of investments into the city. Another major boost came when Qatar was granted the right to host the World Cup. In 2013, the Qatar Dyer Investment Company acquired 80% of the land plots. It's worth noting that almost all the planned constructions were realized in just five years. Lusail is a highly technologically advanced city, similar to Songdo. Due to the constant heat, buildings and roads here need continuous cooling. To achieve this without harming the environment, Lusail has created a vast water supply network with cold water. It's expected to help the city reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Maximum use of recycled materials was employed in constructing all the city's structures. Local production also played a significant role, further reducing carbon emissions during transportation. Public transportation in the city is exclusively eco-friendly. A dedicated charging hub has been built to provide clean energy to 500 electric buses simultaneously, powered entirely by solar energy. What's most important is that the city is continuously evolving. Certainly, large ecological city megaprojects are fascinating, but the upcoming projects are no less important because they aim to protect us from far from ecological matters. On Kalo, Finland In 2023, Finland plans to complete the construction of a highly crucial project that began back in the 1990s. 
If it successfully materializes, it will be a significant step towards solving the enormous problem of reliable and safe storage of high-level radioactive and chemically hazardous waste. The project envisions the creation of a specialized underground complex in a granite massive several thousand feet below the surface. This complex could almost guarantee that nothing will happen to the stored hazardous materials. Currently, spent radioactive fuel is first cooled in special pools and then sent either for reprocessing to obtain useful materials or for storage. For the storage sites, dry storage facilities are often used. In such places, frequently constructed near nuclear power plants or separately, nuclear waste can be stored for several decades. Throughout the storage period, the radioactivity of the waste will decrease, but unfortunately it will never reach natural levels. After this period, the fuel will still be sent either for reprocessing or, more commonly, be buried in a special repository by simply burying it in the ground. To say that such an approach is not environmentally friendly is an understatement. Radioactive substances will continue to contaminate the land for hundreds of years. Therefore, experts have found a way and a place to safely store unwanted radioactive materials. These places are deep geological repositories. They are special complexes of tunnels and chambers deep underground, often created in hard rock. This approach ensures that stored substances are not susceptible to dangers like earthquakes and other hazardous factors. And you'll learn about another very interesting and beneficial project for humanity shortly. Hyperloop Tunnels The richest person on the planet, Elon Musk, who created SpaceX and Tesla, firmly believes that we need to change transportation to make it cheaper, faster and more eco-friendly. That's why he introduced a new form of public transport to the world, the vacuum train Hyperloop. The project originated in 2013, when Elon Musk proposed his brilliant idea. A high-speed transportation system consisting of levitating capsules using magnetic propulsion. These capsules, connected to each other, move through a vacuum tube at incredible speeds. In Musk's view, this form of transportation is practical and, most importantly, highly eco-friendly. The billionaire emphasizes the safety of the development and its lower cost compared to other alternative modes of transportation, such as cars, planes and ships. Furthermore, by utilizing special tunnels, which are remarkably similar to subway tunnels, this new form of transportation will not interfere with other modes of travel. But how does this ingenious project work? Hyperloop consists of individual capsules that link together in a kind of chain, forming a train. These capsules move in conditions of near vacuum, with the pressure inside the tunnel equivalent to one thousandth of normal atmospheric pressure. This reduction almost eliminates air resistance, allowing Hyperloop to reach immense speeds. In essence, the movement process is divided into three stages. In the first, the capsules accelerate. In the second, they begin to levitate, which enables them to maintain high speeds. And in the third, they decelerate. The acceleration and deceleration process of Hyperloop is quite complex, but we won't delve into that right now. Tianhe Space Station By the way, grand projects aren't just limited to Earth, they extend to space as well. One such international project is the International Space Station. However, it will soon cease to be operational, as its mission ends in 2030. Since space research must continue, many countries have contemplated creating their own space stations. This is why China has created its space station known as Tianhe. Thanks to this development, Chinese scientists have a unique opportunity to study various physical and chemical phenomena in microgravity conditions and conduct experiments that were previously limited by constraints. Building a functional space station from scratch is as challenging as constructing an entire city in the middle of a desert. Creating Tianhe took years and billions of dollars in investments. But why? The Tianhe station has both strategic and economic importance for China. In a time when the ISS is phased out, only developed countries with their own space projects will have the capability to continue experiments. Others will have to find someone from whom they can purchase a ticket to space. Today you've learned about the most grandiose projects that have already been realized or are currently being created. Thank you for watching.